Okay, so our next thing is to do some final assembly. And out here you can see kind of the parts that I'm going to be using. What I want to show you first is our block here, and then I'll go through the rest of this parts here. Now, um, we've put a couple of screw blocks on the top, and that's going to make it so that we can connect our coil to our screw blocks, and then we can make all of our other connections on the other side without uh, bothering our coil all the time. And a screw block, I'm sure that you've all seen these before. Um, they're pretty simple. They have a, a straight pin that goes through here, and then you screw these lugs down to tie onto the wires. Each side is separate from the other, so you have a positive side and a negative side, or you have a hot side and a neutral side if you're doing um, AC work. So that's basically what this is. Um, a few screws that's going to be used to, uh, to screw everything down. You can see their use here. Um, and that's what I'm going to use to screw down all the screw blocks. Uh, you're going to see the uh, bridge rectifier that I'm going to use and also how I wire that up so that uh, we can use this for our main pinout. Um, but let me go ahead and show you our block. Uh, you'll notice on the bottom here that it's black now. And what that is is a product called friction tape. And you use it for stairs and things. And I'll show you kind of what that looks like here. Kind of flatten out the carton so you can see. And you use that for going on steps. Now the brand really isn't important. It is self-adhesive, which is nice, so it can stick to the block. And the reason why I did that is because this surface area here is very large. And because of the dynamics of this type of plastic, it's very slick. So with this, it adds just that extra little assurance that this block isn't going to move because once that's tightened down, that's like a great big uh, piece of Velcro. It's not going to move on, on the uh, surface of the top. So that's that part. And then I wanted to show you how we thread the coil center here. And I do that through the use of what's called tap and dies. Now, this is just a small set that I have. Um, I usually stick them all in a wooden box. The wood helps keep them dry and rust free. Uh, but this is just a small set that I have here, just of the standard plumbing supply sizes. So we have half inch and then it goes down to three eighths. So that's basically the standard sizes. Now the dies are of course these parts and the taps are this part. These go on the outside of the pipe to make the threads on the pipe. And these go inside of a fitting to make the thread so you can screw the pipe in. And you take this size here, which is the size that we're using for our coils. And quite simply, you uh, take the hole that we have started, set the tap in, and then you're going to screw this in. And as this screws in, it's going to cut its way into that hole that you can see there. And that hole is just the size that we need it to be. So when we screw this in, that it cleans out the hole and puts everything directly into the centers. Okay? And there's a handle that goes on this end so that you can turn this in. If you don't have a handle but you do have the die, because sometimes the handles can be quite expensive, just get a 12-way uh, socket. They're really inexpensive from any uh, home supply store, auto zones, uh, car repair places, anything like that. And stick that on the end with your ratchet and then you can turn that in just just the same as having the the complicated handle that goes with this so not a not a worry there okay so we've threaded our end in here already so we know that our coil is going to go ahead and slide right in here without a problem and that's going to be one of the things i'm going to show you a little bit later now as you can see once we get that threaded in there the coil is basically set it's not going to go anywhere but this block here is just for our insurance policy, just to make sure nothing is moving at all. Because we want to make sure that our tests are set. So this is going to slide back down over the off the coil. And then our clamp is going to sit here and push that all the way down and hold that secure. As well as we're going to have two bolts that are going to be back here in the back to hold this block down. Now that's, that's as pretty much this complete. And I'll show you how that goes on our testing jig on, a, on another video. Okay, so I've made a couple of wires here that are going to run our power down off of our block onto our setup for our testing. So you can see how this wire would go from this screw block here down, and that's going to make our connection to this point here. 
and then this one here is set so it will take our power from this screw lug here and take our power to this screw lug here. And then these are going to be attached directly down to our testing unit. And all of our connections that we're going to make from that point forward will be on these surrounding screw lugs. Let me walk you through this. This screw lug here is just transferring power from our trigger side of our coil or our small wire. This side here is transferring AC down to this array and this array is quite simple. This plug here is just the same as this plug here. In other words, this is our AC coming from our small wire. This is the AC coming from our large wire. And what I'll do is I'll flip that over so you can see the wire patterns. Now as you can see, we've got one wire coming off of our screw lug here and into this screw lug here. And another wire coming from out of this screw lug into this screw lug here. So this screw lug is in essence an exact copy of this one. So our power comes in and comes out here. And I'm going to show you that with the meter once we get it on our test jig. Now what you can see here, these other wires are coming from our rectifier. Now this rectifier is an RS402L. This is made by NTE and the actual model number on this NTE is a 5318. Now this is set so that it's a 200 volt and up to 4 amps and that's what this rectifier will handle. So it'll take care of uh, running off of our coils. So this one is just for testing purposes coming directly off of one phase of our coil. Okay, so what I do is I bend that into configuration and I take our AC sides that are here and I run those into the AC sides which are the center pinouts on this particular rectifier. And then we have our positive and negative, which are on the outsides of our rectifier, and those run into this block. So if I flip this back over, then you can see that this is our AC input, this is our AC output, and this is our DC output. So this screw block does both AC and DC at the same time. That way we can test both AC and DC off of our coil, off of one branch of our coil. Now this side here is also going to be able to be ran into a rectifier as well if we want to. And all we have to do is utilize these poles here to run our power back into this off of this side if we choose. Or we can set up another rectifier off of this one. So we can test our DC off of one side and our DC off of the other side. And I'll show you how that works a little bit later. Now, once we get this all set up, and these are all connected onto our proto board, which is going to be our base for our test board, then once we have our coil in place, it's just as simple as turning on our drill press to rotate our rotor and taking our readings. Everything else can be set accordingly, so we'll be able to move our test block backwards and forwards. We'll be able to set minute fractions with being able to twist in and out our coil. And everything is set up through our screw block so that you can see the wiring. And it's all simple, very cleanly laid out so you can see exactly where our wires are coming from and where our wires are going and why they are running the way that they are running. And now from this position and how it's going to be wired onto the board, this is our larger wire off of our coil. So we have our start and our, and our finish. And we'll have our start and our finish of our small wire. This is the exact duplicate of this block, which is our AC output. And then this block here is going to be for our DC output of our larger wire size. Now our smaller wire size, I'm going to run that through a block as well to test that. But I'll show you how to do that in a little bit later. So this is everything that we're going to need to know for this particular section of our coiling machine. Now, when we're doing our testing, all of our test blocks, we're going to verify every connection as we go. I'm going to show you how to assemble this full, complete unit on our test unit in a future video. This is all for this video, but I wanted to go through this step by step so you could see the individual parts that it takes to make our testing unit, because this is really the heart of our testing and is going to be the clarification matter. Thank you very much.